How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is the Infrared P2 Pro and this is the Flare E8 XT. This flare costs around 10 times as much as this tiny little thing. Today I'm going to compare the differences and you'll be surprised how well it matches up to this more expensive one. First of all, for anyone looking to buy thermal cameras, this is a really, really good deal. You get so much for it and I'll show you why. The EA XT costs around 10 to 11 times as much as the P2 Pro. Resolution is a little bit better, about 36% more pixels but even if you compare to the e6 which has comparable resolution the e6 is about five to six times the cost of the p2 pro 9 hertz 25 hertz minus 4 to 1022 degrees fahrenheit minus 4 to 1112 fahrenheit so very comparable in terms of thermal range both plus or minus 3.6 degrees fahrenheit how the heck do they do that one possible reason is more advanced chip technology. This one came out about two years after the E8 XT and chip technology moves very, very quickly. They can build it for smaller, cheaper and more capable, lower power. And as a result, they can sell it to you for a lot cheaper. 576 gram, this thing is rugged and heavy nine grams over here. Of course, this is not a fair comparison because it doesn't have a screen. It comes in both iPhone or Android versions. So you got to add in the weight of your phone. You can either point the camera this way or you can flip it around and I guess take selfie thermal images. Sensitivity on this is 50 millikelvins. This one is 40 millikelvins, even a little bit better than this giant expensive one. This magnetic snap-on lens is actually a macro lens. You can then use it to take thermal images of something really close up like PC boards. And it can also serve as a lens cover because a macro lens has a little cover thing on top and you can just store it like this without scratching your lens. I almost feel stupid for buying this E8 even though it was on sale because I find myself using this one a lot more. I can just plug my phone in. If I wanna record video with the E8, I actually have to lug a laptop and connect to it. And this is just unacceptable. Four hour battery life, five to seven hour battery life. It has really low power consumption. When you plug it into your phone, of course it draws battery from your phone. And so it depends on how long your phone lasts. There are some positive to this Flare E8. It's built like a rock. It has a shock limit of 25 G's, a vibration limit of two G's, and a drop limit of two meters. If you look at the manual on the P2 Pro, it says, please try to keep the equipment stable when using and avoid violent shaking or collision. You look at the build quality of this thing, it's actually not really ruggedized with little rubber things all around it. It's enclosed by a aluminum case. So I can totally see if you drop it, maybe the connector will fall off. It's certainly not as durable as the Flare E8. Considering the price, you can actually drop and break this thing five or six times and still come in at under the cost of one of these. Since this is an expensive piece of equipment, you might worry about it being stolen and there's a higher financial risk for carrying this thing around. If you're just doing stuff around the house, you're not a professional where you're doing HVAC systems, you're not an electrician using this day in and day out. You're just a hobbyist like me and you just wanna look at the ceiling, some seals around doors, sort of recreationally once in a blue moon. This is an extremely good value for you to play around with infrared video or imaging. Comes in this tiny little box, a product certificate, a pretty small manual, a cleaning cloth. You got a little carrying pouch, two year warranty. And this is it, the device and the macro lens with the cover. Be careful not to touch the lens part. And this is kind of stuck in there. Look at how tiny this thing is. You got the lightning connector here and there's a magnetic lens. Notice the lens is a little bit offset low. The sensor is likely a little bit lower. They just put a really big circle lens here to sort of make it more symmetrical. And this macro lens has this yellowish tint. Here's a little baggie. It's almost a little bit too small. It does fit it. I actually wish the bag was just slightly bigger so you can toss it in easier. But with a little bit of wiggling, it does fit inside nicely and very snugly. You pull it together and this is it. You carry this little thing around. Both of them are turned on recording video, 25 Hertz, nine Hertz. I have to have this cable and also my laptop sitting around. So it's not as portable. I have a heated eye mask over here. The image is more of a square in the E8. In the infrared, it's more of a vertical video. If I point it to the hottest part of the eye mask, it says 103 in one and the 102.5 in another. So in the infrared, it even gives you one more decimal place. I have an EV charger over here. It's been running for a while. It wasn't charging too fast, but 
we can see that it's a little warm. The E8 is reading 98.2 and the infrared is reading 98. It should be off by no more than 3.6 degrees and this agrees with the specifications. Looking at this wall plug here, the infrared says 91 and the E8 says about 91 as well. Above my front entrance, there's actually sunlight that shines in. So a lot of heat gets leaked through. So we might want to check the insulation that's inside the wall. 86.4 degrees. The flare says 86. So very close. The Flare E8 is not intended to look at things close up. Even though I've adjusted it to the minimum distance, the thermal image appears to be about a centimeter off. Now we can pop on the macro lens. This piece actually makes a product more expensive. So if you don't need this, you can actually get it without it for much cheaper. It's intended to focus to about one inch or less. You can see all these little dots on the circuit board. There's a big chip that's really hot. Another chip that's really hot. And all those little resistors is blue. When you're using the macro lens, the farthest you can get away with is about one and a half inch or so, it starts turning blurry. And if it does turn blurry, just remove it and you can see again, just like that. If you guys are interested in either of these thermal imagers, check out my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.